All right, what's going on? Good evening, everyone. Uh, first thing first, I will be covering the Manny Pacquiao, your Dennis Ugas fight live. All right, so I'll be doing live commentary, so make sure you uh, be here. Probably should be here around 7 p.m. Eastern during the fight, you know, the night of the fight, which is tomorrow. So uh, make sure you guys check me out. We should have a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it. It should be a good fight. And, um, yeah, I'll see you here. You know, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell notification so you'll be alerted whenever I, you know, whenever I jump online. All right. So, um, look, I know I'm late. You know, I did cover the fight last weekend uh, between Guillermo Rigondeau and John Rio Casimiro. All right. I did cover it live. A lot of you seen it for the ones that didn't, you know, or the ones that for the people that really, truly want to know how I feel about this fight moving forward for uh, Guillermo Rigondeau. All right. Um, I'm going to let you know here. We're going to talk about it here. Uh, look, first of all, let me just make this clear. This was for me, all right? And, you know, no people are going to get into their feelings. That's fine. You know, I know the two of these guys, both Casimir and Rigo, have a, a very hardcore fan base, all right? I read the comments. You know, I see the views on the videos. I've been doing videos on Rigo for years. All right, one of my the, my first biggest video was a a video that I did comparing him to Floyd Mayweather. All right, um, so I understand you guys, but look, this was the worst fight I've seen. All right, since Robert Easton Jr. for uh, Bartholomew. All right, I think that fight was a couple years ago. It was one of those fights where neither one threw any punches and they scored it a draw. Right? I think I actually predicted that fight to be a draw, by the way. Alright, um, it was a terrible fight. And this fight here was the worst fight I've seen since then. And for the same reasons. You know, hardly any punches were thrown. And it just wasn't a good fight. Now look, I love Guillermo Rigondeau. All right. Uh, once upon a time, he was one of my favorite fighters to watch, because when I think of the sweet science, I think of him. He's one of those fighters that I thought about over the years when it comes to that. You know, I watched him as a professional. I've watched him have fights where I loved his performances. You know, I loved the Donaire fight. Obviously, that is D1. That was the one that put him up there in the super elite in the pound for pound discussions that was the fight that did it okay but i also seen him fight guys that i just didn't i wasn't impressed with the performance you know right, the joseph Abeko fight was one of his best wins um and i didn't like the performance i didn't like it i didn't like the performance even though it was a good win i know it was controversy behind bob arum and the comments he said about him uh, i get it but I didn't like the performance. I actually was bored. You know, I was bored, but Rico did what he had to do. You know, sometimes it is what it is. I was bored, but it wasn't this. That still wasn't this. I didn't like the Cordova fight. You know, he went in there. He tried to fight a style that, you know, he tried to fight uh, a fight in the pocket. You know, he was he was he was told to do it by his corner. And he went in there. He was trying to excite the the crowd and and that's the first time we saw him somewhat exposed because he didn't really have a good inside game he doesn't look comfortable in about in, in the pocket he never has all right even in the julio seha fight even in that fight he just doesn't look comfortable in the pocket all right he's a great fighter all right one of the uh greatest amateur fighters of all time two-time olympic gold medalist we all know his accolades, all right? Two-time champ, I believe, all right? Uh, but at the end of the day, he is a limited fighter. And once again, with this fight, and this is the, this is the worst fight of them all. I'm not even going to go to the Lomachenko loss. You know, he fought him up at 130, 126, 130. He went up there and fought him because people wanted to see the fight. All right, and he was trying to make something happen. Guys at 122 were dissing him. They were uh, not, not dissing him, ducking him, avoiding him. I understand that. Leo Santa Cruz, 
Quig, Frampton, those guys did not want to fight him. But even with ducks, even with all the ducking in the world, there's a lot of fighters that duck fighters that still doesn't count as a win. There's something that should be mentioned when we're talking about resumes and we're talking about wild fights that are not occurring. If a fighter is getting ducked, we should definitely you know, mention that. It should definitely come up in a conversation on why certain fights are not taking place, why certain resumes, people, you know, certain fighters don't have the resume or the they don't get acknowledged as one of the greats like others are because they're being ducked. So it should definitely be mentioned, but it doesn't count as a win because you never know what the outcome of the fight is. Whether well, Leo Santa Cruz went on there and outworked them and beat him on points or knocked them out. We don't know how the fight what I went down. We don't know. We don't know. I know many of us didn't believe that Leo would beat him. But you never know. You know? Um, so with that being said, this fight here, it made me never want to see Rigo fight again. Now, as far as the way I scored it, I scored it for Rigo. Rigo won the fight. But before those judges came up, I knew, I knew how it was going to be scored. I knew they weren't going to give Rigo the win. They're not going to take this belt from this champion due to that performance. I mean, Rigo literally turned his back on his opponent. You can't land two or three shots around tops and expect to win you threw I mean your, your percentage was great because you hardly threw you were basically playing tag in there you hit and you ran now Casimiro doesn't know how to cut off the rain he looked very limited but you know why he's not getting the same kind of slander that Rigondeaux is getting right now? You know why people are not really mentioning him? Is because he was trying to make the fight. He was trying to fight you. And you were running. It was running. Let's not compare this. I saw Manny Pacquiao's comment. Or I heard it. Heard about what he said. That's not Mayweather. I've seen guys like Mayweather, uh, Pernell Whitaker, you know, even Lomachenko. I've seen them stay in the pocket and make fighters miss without going anywhere. He did that the entire Canelo fight. The entire fight. He stood right in front of Canelo and made him miss. It made him pay for it over and over and again. Now, I know the, the, you know, the Mayweather haters, you know, they're not going to want to admit to that. You know, they're going to bash Floyd. You know, the Canelo fans are going to bash him. The Manny Pacquiao fans are going to bash him for sure. You know, all these guys are going to bash him because they're still mad that he got the one. I'm not talking about that. What Rigo did was literally avoid this guy at all costs. Not only did he keep running, but he was making Casemiro miss and not making him pay for it. He rarely made him pay for it. I mean, Casemiro was literally doing the same thing, trying to land the same shot over and over again. Nothing but the right hand. I'm going to keep throwing this right hand until it lands. It never landed. Rigo just kept stepping to his right over and over again. It was that easy. But what was he doing to make him pay? He would start around, shoot a left hand, hit Casemiro by surprise, and then run around for another minute or so before he threw another left hand. Now, as far as scoring, again, as far as scoring, Rigo won the fight. He won the fight. Do I want to see him fight again? I don't. I personally don't. You know why? Because I said before, 
I haven't enjoyed a Guillermo Rigondeaux fight in years. I haven't been impressed with a performance by him in years. It's been years. I don't remember the last fight that I actually enjoyed. But for the people that are sitting there gritting their teeth, getting mad, go back and watch the Donaire fight. Donaire, who is better than Casemiro to me. He definitely was better than Casemiro at that time that he fought Guillermo Rigondeaux. Rigondeaux didn't go anywhere. For the people that is going to challenge what I'm saying, go back and watch his fights. You'll see what he's capable of doing. He's capable of these things. Now, if Casemiro, if he's that fearful, because I think it's fear. If you're that fearful of getting hit by this guy to a point where you have to run from him in order to display your defense, that's not displaying good defense. That's just avoiding a guy altogether. I mean, you displayed some defense in there. I see you slip the, the punches off all night long. But you didn't put yourself in any danger by trying to hurt him. The object, It's called a fight. This is a fight. At the end of the day, it's still called a fight. So no, I don't think Casemiro won the fight. But Rigo and Long, and all I'm basically saying at this point, Rigo pretty much disqualified himself. That's why the decision didn't go to him. If you want to call it a robbery, fine. I don't agree with an 11, 111, 117 scorecard, but you know if there's a judge in there that's scoring it based on what he likes, and if you're getting the same thing every single round, which is Rigo basically poop poop, land a punches here and there and run. If that's all you're getting every single round and you got this guy trying to be the aggressor here, you're going to keep giving it. He scored it for the aggressor. He didn't score it for the guy that outscored the other fighter. He scored it for the ag aggressor because that's what Casemiro was, the aggressor. And based on how you scoring it, you can get it to the, uh, what is it? What is the, you got defense, you got effective aggressiveness, uh, you got clean punching, uh, and ring general shit. You know? I'm assuming that the guy scored it on Casemiro, him being the uh, ring general, because he's dictating how the fight is going to go. Because maybe what he's doing is making Rigo react the way he is reacting, is which is running, damn near running. He ran. That's running. I mean, he made Lara... You know, if Lara was going for a jog against Canelo, Rigondeau was going for a marathon. Because at least Lara was countering and throwing punches. This is this can't even get compared to Lara against Canelo or Lara against Angulo. You can't get rewarded a title for that performance. Again, you basically disqualified yourself. I will not defend that performance in any way. I don't care what I scored it. I scored it for Rigo because I'm giving him the punches that landed over Casemiro. Casemiro didn't land much. But the performance itself is not what I want to see. I don't want to see a guy win that way, especially a champion. I don't care if he can't cut off the ring or not. This guy had his back turned. There's a picture floating around all over social media showing Rigo and his back turned. No one should, be coming, should become a champion by fighting that way. I'm sorry. And I think Casemiro is going to get dominated by Donaire or Inoue. I don't, you know, that's just my personal. Casemiro is as limited as they come. He has a lot of power. It, it works for the guys he's fought. But when he gets in there with these real dudes, these dudes that's not going to run, that's going to counter and make you pay, and they have power as well, I think he beats them. 
I mean, if he wins, it's cool. I mean, listen, I just want to see a good fight. But what Regal did, you don't win a title that way. I'm sorry. Maybe it shouldn't have been scored a loss, should have been scored a draw. But Rigo did not win. Or Rigo, let me not say Rigo. I'm just saying Rigo should not be awarded for that performance. He disqualified himself from that title. Because no one should win on that performance. In fact, there should be something where I'm going to take a point from you if you continue to run. That, that's how serious it, that's how bad it was. No one's done it like that. I don't want to see him fight again. I don't. We don't need that in the sport. We already got enough things going on. We have poor judging. We have politics. We have fights not happening. We have baby, little stupid baby belts. We already have enough going on. The last thing we need is a guy that's willing to run around the ring and then and talk about how you know, see him brag and boast about how a fighter couldn't hit you. You failed to engage. And you fought like a coward. And you're not going to get points for that. And I'm going to be honest. I don't care if you guys get mad, dumb down. Please, dumb down the video. Do what you have to do. But if you want me to be honest, that was a very poor performance. And I like him. But I got to be... I actually had to go back to the Donaire fight. And, and watch this guy throw nothing but left hand after left hand after left hand with power and precision. He, didn't, he was fighting a bigger man at the time. And he didn't back down for nothing. He was fighting a pound for pound fighter at the time. And he didn't back down. Yet this fight here, no. I'm just going to avoid you altogether. And then hit you and play tag with you. No, it's not going to work. All right? So that's how I feel about it. Um, again, if you like the video, if you agree with me, hit that thumbs up. If you don't, hit that thumbs down. But I don't want—I personally don't want to see him again. For what? I haven't seen him and been impressed in a long time. You know, I know what he was capable of doing. You know, and as far as defense, listen, there's fights where that I felt were boring. You know, I, again, I, I said the Abeko fight was boring, but you know what? He did what he had to do. You know, I, I, there's Shakur Stevenson fights that I think are boring. You know why? Because he's so defensively gifted. But, you know, even Shakur Stevenson, he could fight these guys. And guess what? He's defensive, but he's still beating up his opponent. I said this about uh, Devin Haney against Gamboa. Defensive, but he's still throwing punches. He's not... He didn't knock out his opponent. You don't have to knock out your opponent. Floyd Mayweather, plenty of times where he did knock out his opponent, but he was doing what he had to do. Might not be, it might have been a snoozer. Or it might have just been a good dis display of boxing. Whatever fight, every fight is different. But whatever it was, it wasn't this. This is not the sweet science. This, this is not the sweet science. Stevenson, Haney, all of these guys that people say were boring. Even Rigo in his past, this wasn't it. This was something else. He took it to another level and he ran. He doesn't get credit for that. All right? That's my views. And I'm out, man. Peace.